to my channel and I hope you guys are doing good. So, huh, today's story is about unusual tales about women in mythology by Sudha Muthi, my favorite author, know that. So, hmm, we have learned about Matsya helping the seven rishis, Parashurama avenging his father's death. But have we ever learned about the women in mythology? Hmm? No? Well, we probably have heard, but do we know the in-depth of the story? But if you don't know, don't worry, because this book will help us understand that all. I'm super excited to read this with you guys, so let's begin. Today's story is about Saraswati Bhagavati. Saraswati Bhagavati, the source of knowledge. When Brahma, the creator, decided to craft this world and everything in it, it was somewhat untimely as Kayon reigned supreme. To his disappointment, he was unable to focus on the work at hand and earned for two things, peace and a knowledgeable companion who could assist him, a true partner. For such a task, his confidant needed to be intelligent, quiet, wise, well informed about arts and culture and have great control over the tongue and the mind. Brahma spoke his thoughts aloud and to his unexpected delight, a beautiful woman with a sweet smile appeared in front of him, almost as if she had been created from his words. She wore a white sari and had four arms. Two of her hands carried a veena and the other two carried a book and a japamala each. Brahma was very pleased. I am grateful for your arrival and your assistance. I will call you Saraswati, Vakdevi or Vani, he said. You are the master of knowledge and communication and these names represent those qualities. All my creations will worship you as the goddess of knowledge, wisdom, art and speech. Together, Brahma and Saraswati began to work at their abode, Satyaloka, also called Brahmaloka. Time went by and soon the battles between the Devas and the Asuras began. The two groups were constantly at war with each other. After many defeats, the Asuras realized that the gods were winning most of the battles because of the Book of Knowledge which lay in the custody of Saraswati and was given to her by Brahma. While the goddess was immersed in playing the Veena in Satyaloka, the Asura stole the Book of Knowledge from her and ran away to earth. When Saraswati found out about this foul play, she used her powers to track down and follow the Asuras. Upon reaching earth, Saraswati realized that unlike other goddesses, she wasn't a warrior and didn't possess any weapons. So, the goddess of knowledge and learning decided to use her expertise. She concluded that the best way to catch the Asura thieves was to take the form of a gurgling river and drown them. Now, transformed into a powerful river, she began flowing speedily towards the Asuras. With the river water close on their heels, the Asuras realized that they would drown if they didn't pick up speed. So, they abandoned the book on the banks of the river and ran as fast as their feet could carry them. Saraswati, happy to have the book back in her possession, did not pursue them. While Saraswati prepared to return to Satya Loka, learned sages in the area learned of her presence and of the famed book through the yogic powers. They hurriedly came to see her. Upon seeing Saraswati in her original form, the book of knowledge in her hand, the sages prayed to her. Oh, mother, we are helpless without you. You are our goddess. Won't you remain with us on the earth to help? Saraswati gave an enigmatic smile. I must go back to Brahma and assist him with his work. But I hear your genuine prayers. And I will allow a small portion of my power to continue flowing as a river in my name. The same river will later join the goddesses Yamuna and Ganga at Prayag. And the area of confluence where we all meet will be known as Prayagraj. After that, I will lose my identity and my waters will merge with that of Ganga. Saying thus, she disappeared and so the river Saraswati flows on earth. Adanga, the son of sage Kashyapa, became a great and a powerful Asura. One day in the heavens, he chanced upon the celestial Parijita flowers in the garden of the king of the gods, Indra. Seeing their beauty, he wanted to steal the tree from the heavens and Andaka began pursuing Indra insensibly for the Parijit, Parijata tree. Indra, unable to take the pressure, ran to the trinity for guidance. As the trinity looked at each other, three colorful energies emanated from them. 
from Brahma, white, Parth Saraswati, from Vishnu, red, Parth Lakshmi, and from Shiva, black, Parth Kali, a form of Parvati. The three energies merge to form a divine and a brightly illuminated female form and now this goddess was ready to go forth to successfully slay Andaka. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva were extremely pleased and said to Trinity of Goddesses, The three of you can protect all the creatures in the world. Henceforth, you will be worshipped twice a year for nine days each, once during Sharad Navratri, which will be in the winter, and the other in spring, which will be known as Vasanta Navratri. You will be worshipped by the names of Shakti, Vaishnavi, Kali, Chamundi, Durga and Saraswati, among others, and each of you will be worshipped on a different day. For instance, a day for Saraswati will have a worshippers thank with her items that bring knowledge to the world, such as books and musical instrument. This will be a special time for students seeking Saraswati's blessings. Today, Navaratri forms a big part of the lives of people all over the country, and the children continue to worship Saraswati on the day of Saraswati Puja to request the goddess for her knowledge and her blessings. The end. Thank you so much for uh, staying with me and uh, listening to the story. And I'm so uh, very glad that this story was amazing. I never knew about the story of Saraswati very well. And I know it's a very short story and uh, I'll try to make a long story next time. But um, anyways, I hope you had lots of fun. And the reason why I was absent for a long time is because I was actually uh, at my grandma's place and I also have some exams coming up. So it's not going to be easy for me to upload every day. But I will try my best and uh, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, uh, please leave a like below and say, and say, tell a comment whether you like the story or not and you want me to improve in something. Anyways, thank you so much for staying and listening to me. I'll see you next time in my small story hub. Bye everyone.